Okay, we are ready to draw our flamingo. You should have your paint, your paper, your brush, and your water all ready to go. And now we are going to draw. Now, you will want to draw very lightly on your watercolor picture because you will want to erase some of these lines and you don't want them to show through. But I'm going to draw a lot heavier so that you can see the lines I'm drawing. In fact, I'm going to get just a regular old pencil here where I can draw heavier yet so you can see the steps for the drawing. But don't you do that. You just very, very, very lightly draw on your paper so that you can erase it and it won't be seen through your paint. So, if you remember, when we drew the head of the flamingo, and again, if you haven't seen the video, How to Draw a Flamingo, I will put the link below that showed you how to draw the whole flamingo. And when we drew the head, we did kind of a dented circle kind of thing. So here we go. I'm going to draw the bottom of his head. See? Do you see that mark? And we're going to take off over here. We're going to come around. And there's our dent. And that dent is very important. Because off of this, we're going to do his beak. Okay, take off here kind of a well, you can't tell that, but the the flamingo is looking down. So this is the top of his head, and this is kind of like his jaw and cheek. So we're going to start here to the right of that dent and come down with the top of his beak. Flamingos have long, curvy beaks. And then here where his jaw is, we are going to come down and meet at the tip of his beak. Do you see that? Simple lines. And remember, feel free just to stop your videos and catch up. And then you can start it again easily. Now, where this dent is, we're going to come along and we're going to have his beak. We got the top and the bottom half. Just like that. We're going to put a nostril mark in which is right around in this area and their beaks are usually black on the bottom or I should say on the tips so we're going to make a line here this will be black where this will be a lighter color now we're ready to draw his eye in and flamingos have kind of a ringed eye they're like ringed in black and then they'll be like an orange or yellow in the center and then with the pupil a black now I'm going to draw the outer one with a double a double circle here or circle inside it so that we fill that in as a dark black. See that? And then inside that is the pupil. Simple. We're almost done with the flamingo part. Now, the way they stand when they're resting, especially, usually their head's pointed down. Obviously, it's not always that way, but in this picture it is. So the neck needs to come up, curve, and then come down to the head. Now, if my neck started down here, and if you remember we said to make a hook, I had to pretend like my hook goes off of my paper and comes back around oops <laughs> like this sometimes you have to pretend you drew something so it kind of disappears if our paper was bigger you'd have the whole neck there and then we come to the top and we just follow that along like it was a road and we have his neck in look at that we have our flamingo done now though we want to draw some flowers and I haven't shown you how to do this but I know you would know how to do this most of us sit even when we're kids and if we're playing at drawing we'll sit and draw these kind of flowers but you know with watercolors you can make them quite pretty you see these flowers how simple they are you've got your center which is a circle now I'm gonna make my circle edges a little wavy 
just to show that my centers weren't perfectly smooth around the edges. I've got two whole flowers and part of another one on here. You put your flowers wherever you want because you may have drawn your flamingo farther over. You might have given him a more bent neck. Maybe his beak is farther down. Maybe you made him a lot smaller. So where you have room for flowers will probably be different than where I put mine. Put your flowers wherever you want. And then when you get one drawn, put a petal on one side. See that petal? Come to the opposite side of that flower and put another petal. Try to keep them pretty much the same size. But if they're not, that's not a tragedy. Now, we're going to do two petals between those that you just drew. So kind of start halfway between those two petals. Come up and put a petal. See that petal? And there's room to fit one more petal. Now, again, I went off the edge of my paper because my paper's small. But that's okay. I like having it off the edge. Go to the other side. Put two more petals in. Okay, see, we have our whole flower drawn now. I'm going to put another flower up here. So here's the first petal. Opposite side for the second petal. Two petals in between. Now, I'm going to put just a few petals poking up here at the bottom. Now, the only other thing we need, we need to put a couple leaves in here. So from here, we're going to have a leaf coming out from this flower. Now, I have to be careful. If this leaf is either behind or in front of those petals, and I think this leaf went behind. It's up to you where you want to put your leaves and if they're in front or behind. So there's one leaf, and I'm going to put one more leaf in right here. Now, if you compare this to the picture I just showed you, my flowers are going to be somewhat different. The leaves are in different places. The flowers are in the same area, but different. You don't have to make every picture the same, and you don't have to do it just like I did it. Now, on each petal, just put a little line from the center upwards. It kind of finishes off the look of your petal. Do that on every flower. Now remember to not draw dark like I am because I'm going to have to deal with eraser marks. And then your leaf, here's the lines you just made. On your leaf we need to put veining in. Now don't come in and just do straight lines because nature does nothing straight kind of curvy lines in. I like to start from the center vein that we drew there and just go up. Kind of curvy. Think a little worm or something. Come to the opposite and come across where you started in the middle and go the opposite direction. It doesn't have to be the same kind of curve. Just put them in loosely. There we go. I have one more leaf here. Do the same thing. Now, what we need to do is erase some of our lines that we don't want in our finished picture. The thing that will do it best, again, would be a good art eraser. You might get by with the eraser on the tip of this our old school yellow pencils, a lot of times these don't erase too well and they'll leave kind of smudges. I either like my art eraser or these, got it at Walmart, 
in the office supply where they have all the pens and the pencils you can find these and I love these for my art there's something about what they make this eraser out of it does a nice clean job so if you have extra lines that you don't like this is the time to get rid of it now this is why I ask you to draw very lightly though because as hard as I made my lines and as the pressure I used to so it would show up it made kind of dents in my watercolor paper which is something I don't like and I can never really get rid of them but I want you to see what it does so you won't do it can you see there where you can still see a light line there's no lead left there it's a dent in my paper because this has heavy paper and it dents so I'm going to have lines in a lot of places that I don't want lines but you understand that and I understand that th those lines are there for a reason okay you will need to do one more thing here we want to ink it I like I like the looks of ink and watercolor now everybody doesn't do watercolor that way some do some don't it's just one method but I like the looks of it and you can tell if you look at here there's a little ink line around the whole thing but before I start inking I'm going to take my painters tape and tape this little guy down so that when this comes off we'll have our little frame edge and we don't want to ink over that little edge and if I don't put it down here first I'll get carried away and ink clear to the edge of my paper and then I will have lines there that I don't want so next step just come over a little bit depends on what size of white frame you want and put down your paper now I have tried this both ways with and without and with lighter paper like your mixed media you definitely want to do this but even with this heavier watercolor paper it really works better to go ahead and tape it and I don't know if you can tell I use like a big old clipboard you probably have some clipboards around you don't need one as big as I've got here for this size of picture that way you can carry your painting around or move it or whatever and it doesn't doesn't hurt to put tape on it you might not want to do this to a, a table that has really nice finish on it now we're ready to ink it now important you need a pen that doesn't smudge when water hits it so you will need to get your pens get another piece of paper and draw some lines with your ink and brush over it in fact let me show you some examples I don't know if my any any of my pens here will smudge but let's find out take your pens woo, just do a scribble I got several different kinds here and you probably have several in the house and different companies use different inks here's a sharpie one this is an easy one to come by let's see what it will do and here's a nice fat sharpie you probably won't want to use this on your picture but hey if you like it go for it so I had two sharpies I had a Stedler I have one of my favorites this is a Stedler pigment liner and it says it is waterproof that's the best thing is to use a pen that says it's waterproof and there's several of them out there micron is another good brand but these usually you do have to find them at a craft store okay got my water got my brush let's see what these will do let's get this where you can see it I'm trying to work where I'm not on top of my guy I'm gonna dip in water I'm gonna get it as gloppy as I can and go over that pen oh that one does pretty good well it should have that was my waterproof pen okay see what this one see oh now this one is perfect to show you what's gonna happen if you don't use a water 
proof pen. Let me get over here where you can see it a little better. See how that smudged gray or blue, purple looks all over it. You don't want that to happen to your watercolor picture, especially when you put a lot of time in it and if you liked it. Now here is a Sharpie, and that's not doing too bad. I believe this was Sharpie. Let's see. It looks like you can be fairly safe with a Sharpie pen. So I would suggest you do that with your pens before you ink this picture. Now the problem is with uh, some of our other projects where we inked after we laid our markers down, it doesn't work too well with watercolor, especially these um, less expensive ones. They have whatever filler they use in it your pen seems to pick it up and it quits working. <laughs> it's not easy on your pens. So we really do want to ink before we watercolor and you want to be sure it's waterproof. Now I think uh, we will start the inking process here. Very simple. All you're going to do is go over your lines with your pen. Don't panic if you don't stay exactly on the line. That's what erasers are for. And I'm not staying on the line very well here. Now, you take your time. I'm trying to do this quickly so you don't have to wait forever to get to the painting part. Go over your lines. I would go ahead and color in like the nostril black since that's a tiny little spot that's going to be hard to do with the paint. Same for the eye. Now, I want to show you another thing on the eye. That pupil in the middle. We want to color it all black. Let me get that Sharpie, that nice fat Sharpie out there. But we want to leave a sparkle in it. So in, in your mind or whatever, leave a spot that looks like a piece of pie. And color in the rest of it. Because this is a tiny eye. It isn't so much here. But on your flamingo, on your small piece of paper, that's not going to be a very big eye. So that when you do this and you look at that eye it will look like it has a sparkle in it so I'm going to come in with my little pen and do that I'm going to mark off the spot I want to leave white now I can't pick this up and show you very well because I'm taped down but I think maybe you can see that and then we want to fill in this outer eye here now I'll come in in a little bit and finish that. So we just want to keep going and just cover all of your lines. And once you've done that, you will be ready to paint.